Here is a chart of EOS. And what I did here was to take it from, I believe, the genesis of this coin since early July. And I'm thinking, <laughs> talk about cutting it close and really pushing the Elliott wave. From this is a screen capture for some reason. Bitfinex will not allow me to label at the point of genesis the waves. So I had to take a screen capture and put it into PowerPoint. So when I measure the price here in Bitfinex at the very bottom, the genesis price is measuring at 0.5. And here at the bottom of this is measuring at 0.4928. We'll go back to that in a little bit. So let's count this first. So I see wave one here. <coughs> and wave two, white tail. The rules between wave one and two. State that two cannot exceed the bottom of one, no problem, met. Three is here. Four is right in that gap. Five is at the top of that peak heel. <coughs> so one, two, three, four, five. Five waves give these five waves become sub waves too. Wave one of a higher scale. Sounds like I can go. I'll change the color to this to a green. Make it larger to designate a higher scale. Bold it. And make that number woman number one. I don't have the fonts with the circles. To designate between some Inuit Minuit types. Um, no excuse, but <coughs> this will do for now. Is it going to destroy the prediction? No. You won't. If some Elliott Wave technician comes and criticizes me, I'll say you're absolutely right. You are absolutely right. End of argument. One is here, and there are five waves that led to this first wave of a higher level. What happens? There has to be a three-wave retrace, and by goodness, it has been doing exactly that. This is a three-wave retrace. One, two, three, four, five, A, B, C. One, two, three, four, this could be two, wave two. And if that's the case, what's the rule between wave one and wave two? Wave two cannot exceed the bottom of wave one, which is here talk about pushing that rule, even if it's 99.9999% retrace, wave two is valid. This is why cryptos are so interesting because it's pushing the boundaries. It's got its own personality of waves. I rarely see that in stocks, that a wave two 
when we trace almost all of wave one, it's, I've seen it very rarely. In fact, in stock, when people say, oh, it's going to retrace, still valid, still valid, and a cup, boom, it blows the floor out and falls it 20% below it, below the bottom of wave one. Could that happen to you as well? Could it go to 20 cents? Absolutely. But as long as Bitcoin is turning, it may turn with it. And if Bitcoin wants to go back and turn down and go through 3,000 and go towards 2,000, that's when this could go below the bottom of one and invalidate the wave one and two. It won't invalidate these five subwaves. It'll invalidate the one in the blue, or is it green? My color doesn't come out very well on my monitor at nighttime, but I use the F dot lux, which diminishes the color temperature of my monitor to reduce the blue light so I don't have to stare at it at night and affect my sleep. When the F flux reduces the color temperature to 1200 versus 5600 K, colors don't appear to me the same as they would during the daytime. So I'm not colorblind. Maybe, uh, maybe I've been calling blue, green, green, blue uh, in my charts, especially when I make the, make, make the videos at night. It's because I am using F flux. I would also recommend that to you as well because you might benefit too, because at night, when you're staring at your computer, which has LED monitors, especially your TV, is destroying, is telling your eyes, and which is connected through optic nerve to the retinal pigment epithelium in the back of your eyeballs and the, and the retinal nerves connected to your um, brain, and which innovates the also the hypothalamus and the s supercosmatic nucleus SCN, which controls the circadian rhythm, then staring at a fully lit fully lit um, monitor is telling yourself. telling your brain that it's morning time, bright as day. It's not time to sleep. So it's causing a mismatch of your circadian oscillators in your brain. And you'll probably end up having, at times, really crappy sleep. By using F-Lux, it doesn't fix the problem completely. I'm also wearing glasses that completely block out blue light. It's called the BPI tinting or blue tech lenses, but I also use F flux on my monitors just to double make sure. You might want to look into this. It's a very easy download. Set it up. And after you start using it for a few days to a couple of weeks, you might find yourself sleeping like a baby which is very good because I, if you get a good sleep, the more healthy you will be. Anyways, sorry to digress. So here's wave two that has almost exceeded the full retracement of wave one. Let's see if it happens. Let's label this also as A. I'm going to make a capital A so just so you can see it better. and make that red. And bold it. This B. Call this C. Okay, so this is the count for EOS, not too complicated. 
However, it's pretty fascinating how it's pushing the envelope to the rule between one and two retracement. Even if it's off by one billionth of a penny, <laughs> it's valid. It has not been invalidated. And what will cause it to go below the bottom of wave one, which is at 0.5? If I think Bitcoin takes another nose dive, passes through 3,000, goes towards 2,000, this too will go below 50, I think. So the caveat of all of this is what? Keep a close eye on Bitcoin and see what happens. Again, this is a good place to do your own laddering as your first stage laddering. It's important to know that when you do any kind of laddering, you don't dump all your funds into those lungs because then you run out of money. If I do a laddering and for some reason let's take for example here the dash laddering And I use whatever amount of funds I have into all of these. And let's say for some reason they all got triggered. Price went from down and up and down and up. You got filled in every rung. Well, now you have no more money left. It's best to do by one third or quarters of your funds or whatever amounts you see fit. So if I'm going to do a ladder here, let's say I want to buy easy mass, 10 EOS, I'm sorry, 100 EOS coins. I'll do a ladder to buy my first 25 coins here. In the event it goes down all the way past 0.5, I'll maybe set up another ladder at 0.3. Okay. That way you are laddering your ladders. That's a very, very important concept. And if you ladder your ladders such that you also have a wide spread of lungs, you almost want to make it so, so that not all of them will get filled. Some will have very remote chance of getting filled. Why is that? By design then, you will almost always have some rungs that will not be filled and the funds dedicated to those rungs will remain as cash. And that means what? You will always have cash at hand to a certain level. I usually get typically three to four or five rungs filled. This time I have mine got seven got filled in the Bitcoin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these got filled. And these were posted, these fills were posted in real time. Okay? <coughs> so be careful. Just, and then you, I, I think I heard someone say, well, if I don't buy it all now, what if it goes high? <laughs> it's okay if it goes high, because if you, even when you got three rungs filled, you're making a profit on those three rungs. You don't have to be fully 100% in. That's not the point of this game. That is not de-risking. That is risking it. You want to de-risk it. And the point of the laddering is to de-risk it so that you are just making it so you can be more than 50% right and you can be in it to play another day. And if you only have four or five rungs triggered and the other three to four rungs are untriggered and unfilled, you're still going to make money if prices surge. And if prices take a dump, you're going to have funds to set up another ladder. And you're going to be very happy to be able to buy it at a cheaper price. You're going to be almost overjoyed. So I hope this helps. And again, keep posting questions and comments. And I will answer and respond to them in videos and in 
comment responses. If for some reason I, I'm not ignoring anybody, if I say there are a lot of comments coming in, I do my best to respond to as many as possible. If I happen to miss yours or if I happen to miss your analysis request, please post it again. Pop me over the head. Post it three times. Send me a tweet. Some of you have also wanted to talk to me directly. I'd rather not post my email. I think I did that in another era where I did something similar to this and it was just inundated with emails. If you'd like to do a short communication with me directly, send me a direct Twitter and we can communicate that way. Um, I've had some people approach me with commercial opportunities. No, thank you. Uh, this is not for a commercial opportunity. This is my way of giving back to make it completely free. That way I can reach as many people as possible and help them as much as possible. That is the aim of my Steam Mid blog, to help and do no harm. Last but not least, thank you very much for your upvotes and your follows. If you happen to read and you like it, please don't forget your upvote. I assure you the pennies and cents that I get from the upvote is not my objective. More upvotes means more visibility of my services to others out there. And that's your way of helping me to reach out to them. So if you can upvote, re-steam to give me a little more visibility so that others can get benefit to this, that'll be most ideal. I'd be, I'd be very grateful for that. Thank you.